evening and welcome to Political Forum, a community service project brought to you by CAN TV and their board members. I'm your host, Dartesia Pitts. I'm a board member of CAN TV. And tonight, our guest is Alderman Roderick T. Sawyer of the Sixth Ward. Good evening, Alderman Sawyer. Good evening, Dartesia. Thanks for having me. Of course. Always enjoy your presence on our show. It's my pleasure. Please join in on the discussion this evening with Alderman Sawyer and I. You can call in at 312-738-1060. Let's talk about Chicago. Well, first, Alderman Sawyer, I always like to begin every show with letting the audience know who you are and giving them a little background about yourself. Okay, okay thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Roderick Sawyer. I am a lifelong Chicagoan, uh, born on the south side in the Sixth Ward. Uh, went to school at, uh, school is no longer in existence, Howerton Day School, Elementary, St. Ignatius High School, DePaul University, and Chicago Kent College of Law, where I graduated in 1990, with a Juris Doctorate, and been a practicing attorney for some 27 years now. Sounds like a long time now that you say it. <laughs> uh, but I um, always had an interest in being involved in my neighborhood. I uh, guess I caught the political bug early from my dad, who served as alderman of the Sixth Ward for 17 years, uh, Eugene Sawyer, and I was always the one young person by his side, uh, always involved, always active in some sort in fashion and politics, and that's how I got the bug to be here today. Your dad was also the mayor, the yes, interim mayor. Yes, I remember he was that. After the death of Harold Washington. Yes. So, political legacy. I guess you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And tell us where the Sixth Ward lies. Where are the boundaries of the Sixth Ward? Uh, the Sixth Ward boundaries include the areas of, uh, from far south as Chesterfield, Chatham. Uh, Park Manor, which is part of Greater Grand Crossing, Inglewood, and a small part of Auburn Gresham. Okay. So how, um, how was your ward affected with the remapping? How much of that was affected? Uh, I lost some things that I, I held near and dear. Uh, Chicago State University, which is on the, the former south end of the ward. Uh, some good things. I, I picked up Hamilton Park. I picked up uh, some new portions of the Inglewood community. Uh, but I did miss losing... Um, Chesterfield and West Chesterfield for the most part, and Rosen Heights. Okay. Uh, those were some very engaged areas that uh, I still keep in touch with a lot of neighbors there, even to this day. Okay. And if your constituents wanted to reach out to you, where exactly is your office located? Our office is located at 700 East 79th Street, which is the corner of 79th and Langley. Uh, we have an office. We have a community space there. Our political office is right next door. And again, uh, you can reach us at the same number, 773-635-0006, which we've had since we've been in office. And of course, if you just tuned in now on Political Forum, you can give us a call and join in the conversation tonight at 312-738-1060. Okay, it's always so much going on in the city of Chicago. Yes, <laughs> Never a dull moment in this city of wind. Um, right now, I know one of the urgent issues that's um, pending are the tax bills. Yes. Can you tell us about what's going on with the tax bills? Yes, certainly. The, it's, it's an urgent situation. I got a call from uh, Treasurer Pappas a little over a week ago, and was she was up in arms regarding the urgency of the April 3rd tax sale. Uh, what we, a lot of people were not aware is that the redemption periods have been shortened and it's, if your property is on the tax sale list and the property is sold for taxes, you don't have as long to redeem as you once had. So there was a call to action on all the elected officials to get involved and uh, call all your neighbors, anyone that you can, to make sure that, one, that they know that you're on the tax list. Two, that they're, uh, we're trying to arrange for resources to make sure that those that are unable to pay could find a way to pay without incurring that 18% interest and other fees that you would incur if your property gets sold at the tax sales. So we want to make sure that if you're, for example, if you're in the sixth ward or any ward in the city of Chicago, please contact your alderman. Everyone has a copy of the list. You can go look at it for yourself or you can call and ask based on your address and PIN number. We can help look it up for you to see if you're available. If you're computer literate, you can also go on the Cook County Treasurer's website, put in your address, they'll automatically tell you and divert you to uh, customer service help if you are in fact on the list. So please 
Don't let this slip by you. If you are on the list, please uh, get some help or get something done about it. If you don't sure, if you're not sure, you don't know, contact your respective alderman's office and uh, give them a call and find out if you are in fact on the list. So we have a week and a half to get that resolved. That's correct. And they need to probably get it done that Friday because the tax sale is early. It's early morning, Monday, Monday, Monday morning. morning. Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, there are not a whole lot of options, but please, you can contact us. We can talk about, also talk about possible options for you if you're not unable to pay right away. Okay. We have a caller. Hi, caller. Hi, Alderman. Um, I was reading an article recently in which uh, it was discussing the mayor's um, plan to put a school in Inglewood. And I thought you had a great idea, which was to have the school be half selective enrollment and half public school. I just wanted to check with you um, if you've made any progress on that or um, if that's something that could potentially come to fruition. No uh, immediate progress right, right now. Uh, there are a lot of options on the table. Uh, it really was not even known that the school was going to be certain to be certain in Inglewood until the mayor mentioned it that particular day where we had a press conference discussing something else. So... It's still early in the conversation. Uh, I am glad that we're possibly getting a school in Inglewood, but we really have to be careful about that. We want to make sure what that looks like, how it affects other schools in the community. I mean, are we talking about closing schools and consolidating? Uh, what about people going across other neighborhoods or other sections of neighborhoods to get to school? How does that look like? So it's still part of a longer, more fruitful discussion, and we haven't gotten there yet. So, but I thank you for the interest. And I, I think it's going to be part of a longer, more detailed discussion that we will have with the community, with the CACs, with all uh, interested parties before we can make a final determination of what the school looks like. Okay. We have another caller. Yes. Good evening, Alderman. The young lady next to you. I was wondering, you just said about taxes, that you want people to notify each other. But that's why you were elected. So you can make the calls, not the people. They elected you. And another thing is, why is there tens of millions of dollars worth of construction going on right now? But when black owned, Hispanic owned uh, construction company are on it. That's why Hispanics have Hispanics, blacks have blacks, and me, none of you guys are doing anything for us. Well, let me just say this, caller, and, and thank you for calling, but I, I'm quite honest, I'm a little disappointed in your attitude as it relates to the first part of your question. I think it's incumbent upon all of us to do what's necessary to help our neighbors. Ever since I've gotten that list, I've continuously called hundreds and hundreds of people whose numbers that we can find to let them know that they're on the list. But I would ask all our neighbors, I've gotten lists, copies of lists, community organizations, churches, anybody who's neat no, who has a voice and a calling in their neighborhoods to get a copy, let their neighbors know that they're on the list. If we did what you say, I, I only have limited resources. I can only call so many or reach out to so many. I don't have the ability to reach every single person on that list. But if I distribute it to those neighbors that are interested in wanting to help, uh, I think that we can reach almost everyone and those that either not, of, not knowing they're on the list or are unable to pay, we can find ways to s resolve those issues. Uh, that issue that you're talking about is just all on me. I don't consider myself operating that way, and that's just unfortunately, you know, we have that too often. That's a crab in a barrel mentality, and I don't like it personally. Well, I can attest because I witnessed um, serving in a meeting where you actually brought that to the forefront and discussed it at a table and planned for press conferences to get that information out there. So I definitely know that Alderman Sawyer has worked tirelessly to ensure that the people knew what was going on. Thank you. And um, I know he asked another question regarding construction. I couldn't hear him. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, it was off a little bit. I think okay. it was about uh, Latinos getting an edge on construction uh, projects and, and maybe not enough blacks. I think that's where he was going. Mm -hmm. That's an ongoing discussion. You know, we want to make sure that uh, black people have an opportunity to get involved in contracting, make sure that they get... And this is a conversation that electeds have all the time. Uh, we discuss not only, you know, we've gotten past the part about subs and, 
and things like that. I'm trying to make sure that blacks are involved in prime, as prime contractors on deals, whether it be professional services, whether it be contracting and construction or, or any other the trades. Now I think our conversation needs to push towards equity. When we own something, then we can determine the path of where we go. You know, we don't own any property downtown or to any great degree right now. You know, that's why we don't have a, a, a great degree of, of blacks working downtown. Uh, if we had black ownership, if we got together, and again, that same attitude, if we are going to say separatists and not do anything with one another, uh, we'll never get to the point where we can collectively own property downtown or own swaths of land out south where we can do major developments that we own. When we own it, we can determine our own path of destiny. We can hire black contractors and black workers and, you know, make sure that, and black architects and black lawyers and, and make sure the project is a truly black project when it's black owned. So I hope that answers your question, caller, but uh, it, it is a constant struggle that we, we fight on a daily basis. If you're just now tuning in, you're, you've tuned in to Political Forum. I'm your host, Dartesia Pitts, a board member of Can TV, and we are interviewing and talking to Alderman Rod Sawyer of the 6th Ward of Chicago. Um, something I want to go into, how I know that there are a lot of pre there's a lot of pressure on the elected officials to kind of bring out this magic wand and make everything better. Um, how much does the community being engaged help you serve the public? I wouldn't be able to do what I do without input from the community. Uh, as I go through my community, I, I, I walk up and down the streets. I patronize something in my community every day, and it's not without exception. Uh, whether it's my cleaners, my barber, my church, you know, restaurant, you know, I, I'll, I'll do something in my ward every day. And I listen to people as I walk up and in, in wherever I am and get that input on a consistent basis, not just sometimes, every single day, seven days a week. So I could not do what I do without that input from the community and making sure that people are involved in what's going on. And they need that voice and that say-so so that I can get, I get some of my best ideas, not from me, or from people walk up to the street and, and, and mention something to me. Okay. So I've, I've, most of my work is done pursuant to someone else. So, uh, and I thank everyone for, for bringing those ideas to me on a constant basis. And if your constituents wanted to reach you and they wanted to, I mean, they probably can catch you, you know, like you said, walking down the street or patronizing um, your local businesses, but do you have ward night? I do not have ward night. I, I'm open, I have an open office. Okay. So when I'm there, if I'm not downtown in meetings, I'm in my office, I see anybody that comes in. We have another caller. Hi, caller. Hi, good evening. I have a question concerning, uh, actually, President Trump. It seems like any time that he's got a um, an opportunity to, that he puts, he sheds a just a, a, a not a very good light on Chicago and on its viol on the violence and comparing it to war zones in the Middle East. So, Alderman, I know that you just mentioned that, that you walk your ward and you're in touch with your ward. What, uh, how do you feel about, you know, about his assessment? What are, um, your, what are your people in your ward, what, what do they say? And what do other aldermen say to you? I don't think we put too much stock in what President Trump says right now. Uh, he said he can fix the problem in one day. I mean, he's been there almost 100 days now. He hasn't fixed it yet. So I, I don't put too much credence in, in what President Trump says until he comes here and tries to address the issues that we have here on a direct basis. Uh, he can talk in platitudes or be critical or whatever he wants to do in Washington, D.C. or Florida, his other home. Uh, but until he comes here and talks to us and talks about real solutions, not a photo op, you know, I'm not interested in having pictures taken with him. I want him to, as a president to come here and, and show me what you can do instead of just talking about in generalities that I can fix it in a day, or if I had the people that I, I'm going to bring there, going to fix it in one week. Again, weeks have been passing. Uh, we need uh, that economic stimulus. We need that Marshall Plan in Chicago and around the country, for that matter, uh, to put people back to work, reduce the crime and violence in, in, in communities all over the country, not just here in Chicago, and make, you know, if he truly wants to make America great, you know, put in the work, put the effort in, and then I, I can respect him for that. So Marshall plan and not Marshall law. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to make that distinction. Yes. 
Um, so there was um, um, a headline today in the news that younger grocery store cashiers would get to sell alcohol under the new city plan. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm glad to uh, be a co-sponsor with uh, uh, my colleague Alderman Tom Tunney, uh, where we talked about the need to put young people to work. Mm -hmm. And one area is in the hospitality field. One, people don't realize the hospitality field is an ever-growing field. Uh, it's almost recession-proof. You're always going to have people coming to be employed, uh, whether it be in, as servers, whether it be in the hotel industry, the restaurant industry. There's always opportunity for work. The issue was that, and I, for example, let's go to retail side. In a grocery store, I don't know if you've ever been to a grocery store and you want to buy a six-pack of beer or a bottle of wine, and your, your cashier is ringing you out, you know, they'll get on the mic and say 21 or mm -hmm. liquor, whatever they say, right. and they have to wait a couple of minutes for a manager to come and scan that one item, <laughs> and, you know, you've held up a line five minutes. Uh, with this, we're allowing cashiers to do their jobs. We're allowing servers to be able to serve alcohol in restaurants, and that means that you can get a job when you're 18 instead of opposed to waiting to 21 to be a server. So provided that they take the alcohol awareness classes and be well-versed in the responsibilities of serving alcohol, they can be servers starting at 18. That means they can get a job at 18. So it's one tool in the toolbox to reduce unemployment in the city of Chicago, and I'm glad to have sponsored that bill, which passed out of committee today. All right. And reducing unemployment um, reduces crime. That's absolutely correct. All right. We have another caller. Hello. Hi, caller. Hi, hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. I was hoping to ask the alderman um, about a story I heard recently on public radio. And it, what the story was about was the um, low number of detectives working on the Chicago police force and how that had impacted the city of Chicago's closure rate when it came to crimes, um, particularly violent crimes, and how other cities um, have higher closure rates of, of these sorts of cases. And because the closure rate here is low, that has sort of incentivized people to essentially take the law into their own hands because they were more certain they would get justice you know, for themselves um, instead of waiting for the police to handle it who may or may not ever actually solve the case. So with that said, I know that we are looking at putting more police officers on the streets. I wanted to know if the emphasis is on more excuse me, more detectives in particular, or if we're just looking to sort of have more bodies in neighborhoods. No, thank you, caller, but you're absolutely correct. The, the, the emphasis is not just putting more bodies on the street. It is a, a focused effort on making sure that we have more detectives and more detectives of color, quite honestly, because... Let's be honest, sometimes when, we're, when detectives are trying to solve cases, people are apprehensive on talking to people that don't look like them or don't feel that they represent their interests. So uh, we had a low number of black detectives on the force. We need to increase that number so that we can have those that feel more comfortable in, in making a statement to a, a detective. But let's also be honest. Again, the community needs to get more involved. One of the reasons that we have low closure rates is because people are quite honestly afraid to talk to the police. They're afraid to see that they're talking to the police. They don't want their neighbors to see police coming to their door. They don't want to see uh, police interrogating them or asking them questions because of ramifications from people in their neighborhoods. So it's, it's a combination of things, and, and part of it is uh, the low number of, of black detectives, for example, in our communities. Another reason is community members don't give out information that can solve cases. I've been around places on numerous occasions where you talk to individuals after a crime had occurred and they were like, well, I know what happened, but I'm not telling y'all. <laughs> it's, it's, dis, it's, it's disheartening, quite honestly. It's, everybody else knows in the neighborhood what happened but the, but the police mm -hmm. because no one would tell them. So it, it is frustrating uh, and we all need to do better. You know, with the police, we need to do better with the community, as working with the police, but we have to reestablish that bond, that trust between the community and the police once again, because I get it, I understand that it's, it's been a disconnect for some time now because we did have a situation where we had a, a small number of policemen that were less than enthusiastic about helping black people, and we can be honest about that. 
So I think that as we're working to con re uh, connect that bond, we want to make sure that uh, we do what's necessary to reconnect people with the, com the community and the police so that we can raise that closure rate and make sure our neighborhoods are safe once again. And of course, I think a lot of people know the that age-old phrase of snitches get stitches. <laughs> so people being able to speak and actually feeling safe um, that their the cycle of violence won't come back to and, them if they talk about it. And people it. really have to understand that the nature of snitching is if you are not committed a crime, mm -hmm. and then in order for me to reduce my testimony, I tell on you. Right. That's a snitch. <laughs> if I see a crime being committed out my window. And as a good citizen, I'm going to report that crime. That's not a snitch. That's being a good citizen. Yeah. There's, there's a difference between the two. Okay. Well, this is a perfect segue into talking about the police. As you know, this year, the Department of Justice reported on the um, their investigations of the Chicago Police Department. And one of the issues that they cited in that report, they discussed the issues with the FOP contract, the collective, collective bargaining agreement um, for the City of Chicago Police. The City of Chicago is in negotiations right now with the FOP to change some things um, as it relates to how they are handled um, and how they handle the community. Um, as the chair of the Aldermanic Black Caucus, you just issued um, or introduced a resolution to the city council. Can yes. you tell the audience a little bit about that? Certainly, very quickly. Uh, we did introduce a resolution regarding making reforms to the FOP contract and just to make it more transparent. I understand how difficult a job a policeman is. I, I talk to policemen, you know, I have great friends that are policemen. I know their job is extremely difficult and I respect them tremendously. There are first responders, there are public servants, they do a great job, 99.9% .9 of them probably. It's that fraction of a percent that do wrong, and, and I, I think Superintendent Johnson says it best, if you make an honest mistake, you can get training, and you have to stand up and be responsible for whatever that mistake was, but we're going to get you back on the street and, and, and get you the training necessary. If you've done something illegal, done something wrong, you're no different than any other defendant in court. You're a defendant. You shouldn't have any more rights than any other a wrongdoer has, uh, and the police contract does not um, allow for that. It gives you certain instances where you can change stories, you can do things that a normal citizen could not do under those circumstances. I'm not talking about making a mistake. I'm talking about Laquan McDonald, Jason Van Dyke type mistakes, shooting someone 16 times and, and thinking that you and, and stay on your job another year. Uh, that doesn't happen to a regular citizen, and nor should it happen to the police. Okay. We have another caller. Hi there. My name is Maddie. I live in Chicago, and I'm calling to ask Alderman Sawyer to support the Strengthened Welcoming City Ordinance. It's currently being considered by the city council. It's uh, very important to me that Chicago continue to be a welcoming city for immigrants, and I want to encourage Alderman Sawyer to support this important measure to strengthen Chicago's sanctuary city status. I've already signed on as a co-sponsor. All right, perfect. <laughs> well, we only have a couple of minutes, and I always like to do that. Just, just give you a little background. My grandparents are from Chatham, 80th in right. Michigan. That's right. So, you know, my roots are there as well. Yeah. And I like to do a lightning round. Yeah. What are some of your most favorite points of interest in your ward? I would say Hamilton Park. Mm -hmm. Beautiful facility, beautiful park. I'm a foodie, uh, Brown Sugar Bakery. Uh, shout out to Stephanie Hart at Brown Sugar. Uh, five Loaves. Uh, we have uh, so so many great places in the, in the Sixth Ward. Those are some of my favorites. Okay. All right. Well, it's time for us to wrap up. I'm getting the wrap up um, cue. Alderman Sawyer, it's always a pleasure um, for you to come and serve as a guest, it's and I get pleasure. to host it. Um, is there anything that you would like to leave the um, audience who's watching you today? Yeah, I have a very quick statement, and I, and I tell people this oftentimes, especially when I'm out outside after events, and, and unfortunately, usually regarding events of violence. Go outside your house today. Step outside in your front door. You look to your left. You look to your right. If you don't know both people on either side of you, the problem is not them. The problem is you. So get engaged. Get engaged. Know your neighbors. Know your people in your neighborhood. Like it used to be. Like it used to be. All right. Well, I'm D'Artesia Pitts. I'm a host and a board member of 
Can TV. You've watched Political Forum. Thank you again, Alderman Sawyer, for joining us. Have a great evening and tune in next week for another another show of Political Forum at the same time. Have a good night. Good night.